Hi, all right. Um, today's question is a little rough for me, um, but I am willing to answer it. This is from Hillary Mansfield. Hi, Hillary. Um, you asked me, how did Gabriel Chupin's death affect you, and what do you remember most about him? Um, well, Gabriel was my closest friend on the tour, on the Blind Ambition tour, um, and one of my closest friends outside of that as well. Uh, I think a lot of times we just supported each other. Like it almost felt like we were like, you know, this dynamic duo that we only had each other. Um, how did it affect me? It was a shock. Um, a real shock. Um, I knew he was ill. Um, very ill, and I came to visit him several times in, in San Francisco. But I didn't realize that it was that far along, and um, I was pretty naive. You know, I didn't really know what was going on, and yeah. I was in Italy, and I called, I called him from Italy after one of the shows that we had, um, Buona Domenica, and I called him it was 90, late 90, 90, 1995. I called him. I said, hey, is Gabriel there? And uh, it was his mom. And she said, no, he's not here. And he won't ever be here again. And he had just passed uh, like two hours before. Uh, so it was a bit of a shock. Uh <laughs> to say the least. Um, how did it affect me? Uh, I felt a great loss. I felt um, I felt like I was sort of kind of stupid for not going up even more often than I had and seeing him more often. Um, it made me wonder if I was a good friend. Uh, if I... Um, was a good enough person to be someone's friend at that point. Um, it made me question how someone so amazing and, and beautiful in spirit uh, could be taken <clears throat> so early and quickly. Um, it made me feel a little alone. <laughs> because I felt, I always kind of felt like he was, you know, my partner in crime. Um, what else did it make me feel? What I remember most about him, just this, he was so gentle, you know. Just gentle, and the way he moved, such control. Um, Ah, goodness. I try to remember, I mean, I try to remember all the fun stuff the most, you know. I remember he was so, I guess, grateful when, I, I remember him just being so grateful that I, I came to visit him so often, you know, when Ken was there and suffering as well. And he could, you know, just kept trying to isolate himself. So I would reach out a lot um, and go visit him. God, it's been so long. <sighs> I had a dream about him right after. I know it sounds so, ta you know, hack, you know, dream, a vision of him in white. And it was literally that. It was a dream with him in white. And I, we were talking and, and we were just having a normal conversation. And I was like, but you're not here anymore. And he was surprised that I was talking to him like that and he's like yeah I'm not um, but it's okay um, and I think there was a certain amount of peace I got out of that more than I got from Dominic's passing when I was in Japan um, I don't know it was just a moment of resolution or like closure with that 
like I got to say goodbye. Um, I remember him like an angel. Like he was an angel here and he was an angel after he passed. Um, he just touched so many people's lives. Um, so beautifully, uh, if you ask anybody who knew him, um, they would tell you how, um, what a beautiful person he was. Okay, I'm done. <laughs> I'm done. Um, but thanks for asking, Hillary, because um, it's nice to it's nice to remember. And even though I seem a little broken up, it's really because um, I miss him so much. And it's not tears of sorrow; it's just tears of joy, like remembering. God, he was beautiful. You know, he was just so so full of energy, like just a calm, like peaceful, peaceful man. Um. All right, I'm done.